Hello, I think I'm live now. This is meteorologist Amy Metz updating Typhoon Umpha in the Bay of Bengal, about six hours away from making landfall on an island with about 200,000 people. So I'll be here updating. I might not be the best view here. I'm waiting right now just to get the playback feed on my line and make sure everything is running smooth before I further this forecast. Make sure everything you see. Okay, so I can see a little bit here. Now I'm going to go ahead and give a really quick view of the forecast that I'm going through and then kind of slow it down here through all these paths. So wide scale view. I'm looking at um, what's going to be pushing and pulling this system. There's not much in the way. I do see all the cold um, mountain tops there. That's a good thing for helping degrade the system and downgrade the hurricane or typhoon. But in the meantime, it is still very strong. So as far as um, strength is concerned, at the core, we were just, um, oh, I was just updated that it's now around category two at the core, 105 um, miles per hour. And looking ahead for landfall, I have the toggle over this where it's blinking. And we can see right now there's 32 knots. But looking ahead to six hours, right where I've been uh, assuming this would make landfall is based on uh, what I'll show later. Uh, we're seeing what is uh, in the ballpark of 103, 105 mile per hour winds right there. So that's category three, you know, super typhoon status. That's very damaging. So if there are 200,000 people population there. I'm going to go ahead and um, play through this model. It's one that I've been agreeing with well. And I have the screen screen behind me. I've been trying to get this running, but it's not quite ready. So in the meantime, I'll use what I have. And again, I'll play this, showing the landfall there on that island. And heading up to more populated regions of India and Bangladesh, between uh, the Kutaka, Dhaka regions, and so this is just one model's forecast that then shows us by the weekend things will be returning more to normal. So the things that will drive this and um, help me decide where this will be turning and moving is temperatures. They always want to move toward the warm air. It kind of drives and fuels these types of storms. But all of the mountains here, that's going to, uh, that's going to be a factor in downgrading it as well by way of wind shear that I'll get into a little later. But first I wanna take a look at all the statements and exact times because this is just six hours from now. Um, this is through the India Meteorological Department. I've been more happy with their statements. I think they're doing a really good job showing that um, 85 knot winds. So that's equivalent to 157 miles or kilometers per hour. Um, and that you know is very damaging. So right here in a, what is a populated region, some of these areas, I hope everybody's evacuated because not only are we going to worry about these winds as high, but of course the storm surge will be there as well. Um, and again, just to kind of look at the winds and think about what we be dealing with there with the 97 mile per hour or 157 kilometers per hour forecasted there at landfall, we'd be in the ballpark of um, pretty strong damaging winds. Uh, you know, what a lot of people would be calling category uh, two winds, or category two hurricanes. And I did post a story on my Facebook um, this week about a place in that same region that did get swept away by water. So unfortunately, that's the biggest, uh, I think the biggest threat to that region east of the 
eye wall, otherwise it sees wind speeds. Now, these have already been felt. Um, that was on the coast of India earlier today. So that's um, you know enough to do tropical storm force winds that can drop tree limbs, kind of cause damage, and then have the heavier gusts that might knock down a tree or do further damage. But um, changing again here, looking at the temperatures, um, that's where it's going to be heading forward is a region of higher temperatures. So these are the sea surface temperatures, and that's not really a mechanism here that we can decipher because all of those temperatures are the same. Um, so then I'm going to go through and do things a little slower now um, after I come back to the wind speed forecast and go over the wind shear because this will be downgrading in the next few days um, a lot, and I'll show you why, and especially at landfall downgrading a lot right after landfall. So that's what I'll get into after I run this forecast track one more time. And just make sure things are visible on the feed since I had to do this a little different so that people can hear me. Okay, so it looks like everything is visible. I'm glad to see that at least. And soon enough, I'll get this um, green screen up. So about sheltering, um, I shared some things on my Facebook page about some shelters that were in place, even with livestock, uh, options for livestock to go. Because that's going to be um, you know, important for anybody along this vicinity here where all the storm surge is going to be extremely high. That's definitely... Uh, one of my biggest concerns with this. And then the whole Taka region here where there are about 15 million people living that could be uh, you know, really flooded around some of the lower lying areas closer to uh, the waterways. And the damaging winds, you know, there will be uh, some gusts that are stronger than what we have forecast. Um, some of those stronger gusts are in the thresholds of category three, which is considered devastating winds. And so I wanna go through more of this forecast here though, because the good news here is that yes, it downgrades quickly, um, rapidly, the wind speeds are gonna go down. So anybody that's living here more closer to DACA, you know, things are not gonna be as bad as we're seeing here, it's, just, it's going to rapidly decrease because of all the mountains and also the wind shear. So now I'll jump back into that wind shear that I skipped over earlier. So I wanted to make sure everybody focused in on the exact forecast track first. And now this is what is called 24 hour shear tendency. I'll try to get the entire thing into view before I start this. All the information here. So we can see this is um, fun here in the Bay of Bengal. And we have a bunch of colors, a bunch of numbers and lines, and these are really important in um, forecasting tracks and also knowing is this storm going to get worse? Is it going to get better? And when? And here we have some good news. Things have even changed since I saw this last, it, it updated in the last few hours. So decreasing shear. It's here, and I'll explain what shear is in just a minute. But we're going to know that that's close to Umbun. And we'll also know that low shear numbers, these are in knots. Um, I didn't quite get it, but up here it says the shear is in knots. So um, lower values around 20, pretty low. High values would be, you know, more like 40, 60, 60s is really high. Around mountain peaks, that's normal. Um, that there would be wind shear because what wind shear is is something that destroys hurricanes by 
bringing in winds that don't match that cyclonic flow. So we saw on satellite, everything's just cyclonically flowing around this storm. All of a sudden, the mountains intermingle with the storm and it starts disorganizing it. So wind shear just means, one example I can give is if there's this pole right here on the ground, the low level here is going to be having a flag going one way at a certain speed. And then midway, it'll be blowing a different way, maybe a little faster. And up top, a completely different way and even more rapidly. That's wind shear. And that's pretty normal in the atmosphere. But with hurricanes, typhoons, these cyclonic storms, they start organizing and that's where they get intense. When they're all, all those winds top to bottom are moving the same speed in the same direction at the same time, that's no wind shear. That drives hurricanes, typhoons to continue strengthening and without outside forces to kind of disassemble that organization or cool up, cool down the temperature, then it just keeps, keeps on um, intensifying. So right now the good news is that we do have this year that will begin affecting it. Those outer bands on the satellite, they go, you know, way up where they're starting to get closer to this higher shear. So eventually they'll start intersecting. And there are plenty of mountains here where, those, where we are seeing these 30 to 40 values. That's also good news. And so as this moves north and does make landfall, we have plenty of reason to believe that it's going to um, decrease in intensity rapidly, leave behind some rain. It's going to linger on all the way to the north, to the east. But uh, beyond that, the temperatures put up north up here in this high shear um, profile. That is also going to start affecting the storm. In the next uh, six hours or so, once it makes landfall, we'll see cool temperatures getting mixed in to that center flow. And that, too, will decrease the intensity of this very quickly. So I'll end with some more playthroughs on these. And I'll go ahead and add anything, uh, all websites to the description on the video. And just see if anybody happens to be here. This is a channel, I don't use any nice questions, but this is a channel I just started. So nothing here. I'll go ahead and share this on the other outlets I've been utilizing and continue to keep moving forward so that I can provide severe weather forecasts around the globe. And on that note, I'll take a little spin around Windy App on the globe and just take a peek at what else is going on and what's been here. Just before I leave As we did have Vong Fong in the Philippines that lingered up toward Korea and Japan and dropped rain and brought cloudy skies. Not much going on between here and um, Hawaii right now besides one other cyclone. Pretty standard this time of year for them to skirt up the tail of uh, Alaska there and then drop down some rain onto the coast afterward. You can see where the sun is rising too. And nothing too well developed over the United States today, but some areas with some rain and weather for sure. That looks like that's not undergone the cyclogenesis already. Probably in a few different. So I've been focusing a lot on this um, Bay of Bengal. You know, it's the first typhoon they've seen in 20 years, and yeah, it's not looking too good. I wish it was better, but I am glad we have all these resources available. Look at these amazing satellite images. Um, you know, if we just understand how to use these and start sharing them, I think it can help a lot of people. So we could see these things coming well in advance, and 
with the right information, the right tools, you can understand where they're going well in advance. So I've been really happy with that Indian Meteorological Department. Uh, I definitely recommend anybody go check them out. One more forecast of the big one right now. <laughs> 